limited railway light engine with narrow gauge tour. Do you know what? I'm just going to make that the title of the video. That was absolutely banging. Well, today's the day. Let's get started. And now for the main event of this particular vlog. But, as the title of this particular vlog would suggest, you already know what that is. And yes, it is indeed true, as we are going to be touring some Welsh narrow gauge railways for the main feature of this particular vlog. You might recall that during the Christmas slash New Year's Eve vlog that I made at the end of 2018, that I mentioned that I would very much like to do a Welsh narrow gauge tour in the new year. Well, it's the new year now, it's July 8th, and just in a short hour, I think, that is exactly what is going to happen. As we, and I mean by we, me and my father, are going to be touring not one, not two, but six narrow gauge railways in Wales. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it, as all of you should be, as not only are we going to be touring six narrow gauge railways over the next week, but we're also going to end with something quite special at the end of it, but I'll save that as a surprise when we come to it. As we, first of all, are going to be going right across Wales, touring the very crown jewels that Welsh narrow gauge heritage has to offer. Our journey is going to start of course from Sussex and we're going to be staying overnight with some relatives in Herefordshire before the next day we will be heading to the Welshpool and Langhire Light Railway and sorry if I butcher these names <laughs> but we are then going to be making our way towards the coast in Port Maddock. The next day we are going to be going across the Fastiniog Railway and then after that in the afternoon towards the evening of that day we are going to be going right to the top of Snowdonia on the Snowdon Mountain Railway. The next day we will wake up from Port Matic again and this time we will go across the Welsh Highland Railway and when we are done with the Welsh Highland Railway we will then leave our overnight stop in uh, Port Maddock and then we will go to um, I believe somewhere very close to Tawen and then the next day we will then head down towards Tyrone Wharf specifically and we will go across the Tyrone Railway which is one I'm very looking forward to and everyone here should be looking forward to that as well and then the next day we will actually go from Aberystwyth to Devil's Bridge along the Vale of Rydal we will then head back to Herefordshire stay the night before we head back towards Sussex but on the way we will then head towards our surprise feature and that's basically the uh, plan that we've got ahead. Along the way, I will try and vlog as much as possible, our experiences, get some nice cool shots of railway stuff, comment on a lot of historical elements about it, and just show you our enjoyment and the wonderfulness that is Welsh narrow gauge railway heritage. This is something that, well, not just something, this is a quest that I am very, very much looking forward to, like I've mentioned, and I am now in, ah, the words can't describe how much I'm looking forward to this and we haven't even begun yet as the official thing begins tomorrow with the Welsh Pool and that fire but it's best we get to Herefordshire and then get to Welsh Pool. So that's where we'll head off to. But for now, actually no not for now, just now in the context of the vlog because I've rambled on long enough, let's get started on our Welsh tour. Off we go! You know, I would like to point out that me and my father are no strangers to um, going to uh, Heritage Railways together. In fact, when we do visit these Heritage Railways like we've done in the past, it's been a very enjoyable experience. But this is the first time that we've done something on a much grander scale, as in touring six railways in a row on an actual dedicated trip 
to do all of them at sort of like one after the other. So it's quite something you need for us to do as opposed to for going to a day out on any old nearby heritage railways that we've done in the past. But when we have done, it has been absolute fun. It's always been a real engagement. And my dad, he's the most intelligent guy that I know. He's, he's I mean, bless him, because uh, he does so much. And I'm really grateful for everything that he's done. And I'm glad that we can really um, go out and do this together, because this trip is very much for the both of us. So I really hope that you guys can also appreciate the enjoyment value that you will get as much as we are getting by going on this trip together and you seeing us do this trip as I vlog it. But yeah, and yeah, that's all I really need to say at this point because right now it's near the uh, quarter past ten in the evening and tomorrow we are going to be starting the trip officially by heading down to Welshpool and going on the Welshpool and Langfair Light Railway. So uh, I think I there is no point in uh, just rambling on now by saying basically good night at this point, but we'll see you immediately in the morning as we head out to Welshpool. And now the journey officially begins. Yep, we are at uh, Welshpool Raven Square Station, as you can see by that signal box. And we are definitely uh, surrounded by it all. Even the big uh, old standard gauge wagon over there. But yeah, we are basically now here. Dad's just um, get back in the car, just uh, getting himself organised before we head out. But very soon, in about, um, let's have a look at the time, because the time is now, uh, literally it's uh, half past. So um, very soon, uh, the train's going to come in in about 10 minutes or so. And I'm going to get a nice shot on the DSLR when, as it comes in. And then after that, we can vlog some more as our journey down the Walshpool and Langhair Light Railway can officially commence. Well, the countess is moving with us. It takes off like a stabbed rat, really. Okay. Oh no, I was just talking to myself. <laughs> you thought I was talking to you? No, I'm sorry. You've got to get used to the fact that I talk to camera. That's fine. <laughs> Let's go and grab a seat, shall we? So, Nicholas Loxton. Yeah, I should point out this. My father's name is Nicholas. So, what's your impression on the countess? Fantastic little engine. I mean, it's not. As little as you know, it's like fantastic. the R Romney Heights and Dint Church. You remember that? No, that's but that's different. This is a proper railway. It's not a gauge. I know, but the other one's just a tiny toy engine compared. <sighs> toy engine, such a novice. <laughs> but you looking forward to going down the line, though? Absolutely. This is the first one of the Welsh Mountain Heritage Railway light <laughs> engine narrow gauge tour. Do you know what? I'm just going to make that the title of the video. That was absolutely banging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, let's carry on. We stopped again here. How do you pronounce that? Castell. What was that? Castell. Castell. Seems to be some kind of a junction or more like a loop. It's a crossover point for the train, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, that's what it is. Seems like there's some kind of problem or some kind of issue yeah, to fix. Actually that's a good point. We 
are arriving at the end of the line. La Fair Cara. You're never gonna get that right, are we? Yeah, we're never gonna get that right. So now we're in another carriage, going the other way. Um, what did it say on the outside of the carriage? The Zillatal. And what's significant to us about that? Because uh, Barbara and Stefan, your cousin, live there. Yeah, our relatives live there, basically. So this is kind of um, nice, basically. A long way from home. Very long way from home. I was just mentioning that uh, we should have a word with the Austrians about the quality of their workmanship on their carriages because it's quite a... Uh... So you chaps in the Zillatar need to take note of this. This is a really bumpy ride. Well, get in the workshops, get sorted. Yet yeah, about 50 years ago... When you poke your head out of a window of a carriage with a steam engine pulling you, it's already a wonderful sensation, but to be out here on it's basically a balcony, a veranda, with the steam engine so close that you can basically touch it, that is just something completely different, especially this one. An engine that is over a hundred years old, windenized, and it just has a beautiful name like the Countess that really does fit well with the heritage of this beautiful, beautiful line. Take it away, Countess! <laughs> Stations. Uh, what did you think of the Welsh Paul and Langford? How are you I, I just, I thought it was really, really sweet. I love. I mean, I, I know you think that isn't a little engine. Well, I, I look at it as a little engine. You know, I think of things like the Scotsman and the A4s and all the rest of it as big engines. I mean, it still That's is a glorious engine. engine. Oh yeah, it was lovely, absolutely lovely. And the line itself? I thought it was a fantastic scenery. I mean, jings, you know. Can't get a bit better than that, really, can you? No, but I mean, all of this is fantastic scenery, to be fair. But that was, especially with the sort of whisting, turning snake like sort of nature of the track. Just really nice. And lots of sheep, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Can't have whales without sheep. That is absolutely right. <laughs> So yeah, the long and short of it is, the uh, Welsh Pool and Langfire was a good experience. But now it is time to turn in at this fantastic uh, cottage B&B, at a place that I cannot pronounce for the life of me, so I'll put it up on the screen right there, somewhere there. And um, yeah, and the people who run it, Bernie and his wife, they're absolutely fantastic. And if you're around this part of Wales, I absolutely recommend coming here. It's beautiful. Very, very pretty. Very beautiful. So yeah, not too shabby whatsoever. But now it is time to turn in and get ready for the next two railways, which we will cover tomorrow. Because, like I said with uh, the Welsh Pool, because it was designed to serve a community. God, I mean, uh, that railway didn't come about until like 30 years or so after its proposal. It's surprising how long it would have taken it, it took really but of course it was money anyway that's me that's me rambling anyway go away wasp or whatever that was anyway so like i said the welsh uh, the welsh pool was designed to serve a community in well by design but most narrow gauge railways in wales were designed to 
basically takes slate down from the mines and the hills. So the first, the next narrow gauge rail we're going to check out is actually was originally designed for that purpose. But we'll see where we're going to next. But for now, better turn in and carry on with the vlog. Let's do it.